Hi there. So this is the first vlog, video blog that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to give you a little idea of what I've been doing this week. Maybe this has been going on for about the last month. So most of what's been going on, I was actually setting up the Patreon and playing around with videos and how all this works. And uh, now I've been working on um, a sculpture for a small works show, um, Mid-Year John Bean Art Gallery. And uh, so the restrictions are the work has to be 250 mil square or cubed if it's a sculpture. I'm doing a sculpture because that's generally what I'm best with and uh, even though I love my drawing, um, frankly the standard of 2D work at John Bernard's shows is just just uh, intimidating and um, I've, I've got a little way to go before I get to there as far as I'm concerned. So I've been working on this piece. Um, there is a head that goes on here. Started off as a Barbie horse. Uh, and you chop it down and put little sections of wire in there so that all the legs become really short. Um, I did some work on the neck as well. You might be able to see sections of polymer clay put in there. Polymer clay is a moldable plastic that looks like this. And it sets like this. And this, this is the, the, the beautiful mane for the horse. It's going to go on there. Very Barbie kind of, you know. The horse itself, uh, the little stumpy legs, it for me reminds me of um, Thelwell, uh, an English cartoonist. He did a whole series involving small kids having just terrible experiences on horses and the horses you know just doing terrible things back and everything was just all over the shop but it was all all based on uh, horse lore a um, lot of fun beautifully illustrated so the figure on the back is actually referencing um, an older sculpture I did called Portman 2 which was in my jet show and that figure was a very Napoleonic he had the tricorn hat on that this one has as well anyway so I'm referencing that and so he's got the great coat on which I've been having great fun doing all the all the um, the folds trying to make it look like heavy fabric playing with little details on it so there is going to be a whole load of bridal work on the head as well which will be made from little sh strips of aluminium but the the character is actually sitting in the horse he's in a little compartment um, which you can't really see because he's just filling it up but he's actually sitting in it, so there's could be no legs, and there is no, um, there are no spurs, and uh, what are those things called? Stirrups. He's going to have hands on there as well, and he's going to be holding apprehensively onto the side of the horse. And the horse is cracked and broken, which was partly because I kept breaking the legs again once I put them together, and then I actually deliberately broke sections of the horse. You can see that crack in the side, big smack hole. And I'm actually going to make it very conspicuous that the, the, the head has got a huge crack around the neck. And this, this to me feels appropriate and it's a it's nice metaphor. I'm working on 
other little things to go. There's a little water bottle, which is gonna go on the side. And there's a, a bit of a saddle bag that I'm working on. These will have little aluminium straps and buckles on them. This is something I just baked before. It's a little set of uh, saddle bags, maybe ammunition bags, I'm not sure. They're gonna go strapped over the shoulder like that on the back. And they'll have little buckles and straps. I made this rather nice little gun. Lots of detail on there. Just made from um, laminated plastic for the main body. The pink is a knitting needle. Just happened to be hollow as well, so it was very easy to actually get that to the way it was. Oh, there goes the oven. Right, I'll show you what's in the. I'll show you what's in the oven. So look, I made a little bed roll. You can see even the texture on it, and that sits on the back there. Just tucks in there. Look at that. So that tucks in there, you see, yeah, look at that texture. And uh, the gun will get strapped on the back. I think somewhere, probably around here. I can't go I can't go too far above his head because of the height restriction on the sculpture so the, the gun's gonna get strapped there so there's gonna be quite a lot going on the back of the figure I'm making a little bottle of wine and it's polymer clay for the actual bottle and the little bit of kind of you can see the delicate pattern around the uh, the bottle that's part of an old shisha pipe that I found or was given in Denmark when I lived there years ago. It made its way back to Australia as part of a pair of goggles, steampunk goggles, that I made for my first time at Burning Man, which was 2007, which was when I was living in Denmark. And... Um, yeah, and then I pulled it off the goggles and it's been lying around in the scrap box. And so I thought, oh wait, that can be used on there. That's, you know, it's perfect. So it's, that's all gonna be nice. There's be little fittings on that. Also made this nice little box. You can see a little bit of wood grain on there. I'm just gonna wire, put some steel wool over that. Um, and that's that's probably gonna be sitting crunched up on the back or strapped on the side somewhere that's all gonna be clustered around the figure and I'm, I'm I don't know why I'm gonna I found a little this beautiful little shell um, in one of my boxes it's a very nice little shell and I'm gonna make a little snail well actually quite a large bloody snail which is gonna be sitting up on his shoulder right there and that, that's intriguing because there was a snail in a on the shoulder of another sculpture I did years ago. Not quite sure what that's about, but you know, snails are slow and kind of protected, but you know, there's an interesting metaphor there. Yeah. What, what I think the portmanteau sculpture is like a lot of my work i mean most of my work I, no wait scrap that artists are always doing self-portraits every time you're doing something creative it's just uh, an expression of your filters in reaction to the world around you or a subject or something like that sometimes it's more personal and obvious though and i think the uh, the the portman to piece is quite an obvious one it's the figure on the horse riding through life and um <coughs> just the little changes and tweaks and the feel the way i feel my way through the sculpture makes me feel like you know he's very much like 
this particular figure is probably expressive of the changes that are going on this year for me with uh, moving my focus you know more towards my art starting up the patreon you know with your help um, you know there are cracks in the horse the figure looks a little bit apprehensive it's that kind of thing you know it's it's not difficult metaphor but it, but it's it's in there and there's other things going on as well the coloring I think I'm going to go a very similar spray range to the last piece, the last, the original portmanteau. So portmanteau means two things. It was a type of old travel trunk that you, it was a, like a sea chest and you travel with it and then you'd open it out and it had um, like uh, hangers for suits and trousers and jackets and it also had drawers for shoes and socks and underwear so it was a gentleman's traveling trunk that could open out into a wardrobe so it was two things in one portmanteau is a french word that in english means to take two words and push them into one and so both words get squished into one and the meaning of the original two words gets compressed as well an example of that would be uh, slithy, which is a compression of slippery, I think it is, or slithery and lithe. Thank you very much for subscribing to my Patreon and donating and being my patrons. And um, I will continue to inform you and entertain you with uh, little insights into what I'm doing. Have a great day. Oh, and also I will be getting a start and end title sequence done with some music, hopefully, a friend of mine's going to do.